us in Australia, it has to be a balancing act between humanitarian and political right. considerations. Well, I don't really think so, not between humanitarian and political. We've, we've agreed to accept people who have a well-founded fear of being persecuted. We've agreed not to send them away. I, I, you know, the numbers we're talking about here are infinitesimal. When, 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 when Philip Reddick talks about it, maybe 2,000 people this year, that's as many people as arrive in South Africa seeking asylum in 15 minutes. And that's as many as a wealthy country like Australia receives in an entire year. We host roughly one-tenth of one percent of the world's refugees. We ought to be embarrassed, quite frankly, to be saying that we're under siege when we have a couple of thousand people arriving to seek asylum in a country with our wealth and ability, not, not taking account of the fact that we were one of the signatories to drafters of the treaty that entitles people to come here directly and seek protection. When the Prime Minister talks about cracking down on illegal immigration, he should be ashamed of himself. This is not illegal immigration. This is legal, authorized seeking of asylum under a treaty that we are a part of. There is nothing illegal about this, and we should stop using rhetoric like that. So what's the solution then? Obviously, as we're seeing, Christmas Island is not going to be capable to take many more asylum seekers. Right. Well, look, the government has talked about bringing asylum seekers to the mainland, which is what most other countries do. It's a perfectly reasonable thing to do. We've made a decision that we want to keep people off on Christmas Island. We're not bound by that. We can do whatever we want. We can bring them to the mainland, process them in the way that we ought reasonably to do, and that's a sensible policy option. I mean, there is a duty under the Refugee Convention not to arbitrarily detain people seeking asylum. As soon as we know who they are, we've satisfied ourselves as to security concerns and identity, there's an obligation. This is not a discretionary matter. There's an obligation to allow those people to await the determination of their claims in our communities, and that's what we should be doing. So overall, would you say that Australia's approach to asylum seekers greatly differs to that of other countries? Well, as among the developed world, we are one of the absolute bottom tier in terms of what we do for refugees. The numbers who arrive here are insignificant, and we've never followed through on the rhetoric of working to do more effective burden and responsibility sharing with countries in the less developed world that received thousands of times as many refugees as we do. This was promised by the prior government. It was promised by the current government. If Australia honestly believes that the refugee protection system is broken, it should have the courage of its convictions. It should lead by example. It should call for a new system to share out refugee burdens and responsibilities around the world. But I can guarantee you that no credible system of that kind would have Australia receiving fewer than the 2,000 measly number of refugees that we're receiving right now. That's not a major commitment. It's one of the lowest in the industrialised world. Yeah, plenty more to discuss. All right, Professor James Hathaway, we appreciate your time on Sky News. Thank you. You're very welcome.